Joining me on Doctor's Corner is Dr. Lucas McMillan. He's a naturopathic physician and he's the clinic director of the Delbrook Integrative Medical Center and Christine Rutherford. She has over 30 years experience in the fitness and health industry. She's a personal trainer. She's a lifestyle fitness coach. And I'm excited for them to come back on Doctor's Corner because we're going to be talking about a very important topic and sometimes misconceived about hormones. So welcome. Yes, Thank hello. you. Thanks for having us on the show. Yes. yes, yes, for sure. We're really excited to be a part of this and to get the message out there. And hopefully we can answer questions for people or at least give them some direction where they can come and find out more uh, pertaining to their own needs. Yeah, so what are some common hormone questions? Now, there's quite a range of what would bring people in to really get to know the hormone side. Um, and it's quite different for men and women. So on men's side, by far the biggest questions I get are, where's my testosterone level? Do I need more testosterone? Do I have enough? Um, sometimes do I have too much? Um, and that can be from a range of things. I think men tend to associate libido quite a bit. Um, I think some are starting to catch on that hair loss can be related to the testosterone or how your body handles testosterone more, more accurately. And then as we age, things like prostate issues where we might have trouble urinating. I think people are starting to catch on that hormones play a role in that. that, that that's something to be assessed and that we can monitor. Uh, for women, there's very much a different side and by far the biggest thing that drives people in would be the hot flashes, sensations of heat that just come on, especially at night, but they can really happen at any time. The intensity level is really quite variable, it can be very intense or it can be quite mild. Uh, sleep concerns, uh, some trouble sleeping or anxiety. So quite a range, really. Yeah, so as we age, you know, we have to be aware of that graceful aging, <laughs> that, that we need to be aware of that if there's something going on in our bodies, like our prostate or um, just getting the hot flashes, it is normal, but you can help yourself. There are, there are you know, preventive ways to, or natural ways to help us to, to live the, a life, a better life, quality of life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think that I always like to make the distinction of the common versus normal, because uh, it's very common to have symptoms. It's common as we get older to maybe have less energy, to maybe gain a little bit of weight. It's common to have those stronger menopausal symptoms. I wouldn't always call that normal. And in many cases, it's not. In many cases, we can actually improve that by going over many of the diet, lifestyle, um, assessments, treatments, in some cases, bioidentical hormones. There's quite a spectrum of things that are involved in that picture. And uh, I, I always like to separate that. It's too many people are, I guess, okay that as we age, things are starting to go downhill. It's one of the things I've chatted with uh, Christine about quite a bit is we want to keep everything up to a level that is fun and manageable and, and keep everything going. And I think uh, Christine has been a fun example of that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, it, it is for your aging, especially. And I've noticed smaller things that creep in the biggest time that I noticed it. And it was actually to my benefit in a way was when I had my car accident because I needed to put, because of my age, I was healthy but I was healthy for a woman my age and I was overly healthy. So I was about 10, to 10, 10 years or so younger than I actually was. So it was when I was in my forties that my car accident happened in my early forties, but because my body was aging, then my body didn't have enough of everything to um, actually heal it to the point where it needed to get back to normal function. So what ended after a few years of, you know, up, down, up, down, on, off, on, off, and it couldn't do what I was needing to do from even my job, then I was able to put my hormones back into balance so that when the hormones are in balance, then the body can heal itself. It can grow. It can do all of that naturally if you give it the time to do. So the biggest thing for me was putting those hormones back into balance. And all I needed was a little bit of estrogen, I needed a little bit of progesterone, I needed whatever else they gave me to put in and do that um, healing. And I was very adamant to do as much natural as possible. So it had to be congruent with my fitness and my, and my um, eating as well. So I had to be eating foods that were going to encourage that growth or encourage it. But because my body didn't have enough 
as it would when it was, you know, 20 or younger, because when you hit the age of 30, and correct me if I, I'm incorrect there, uh, Lucas, it, at about the age of 30, <clears throat> your body starts to transform and it actually starts to die off in, in a sense. So your, you, your hormones lessen, they drop, you know, in, in a way. So in looking at that, um, mine weren't, because I was in my early 40s, mine weren't where they needed to be to recuperate from that car accident. As soon as I put them back in balance, then it was like a matter of weeks, literally. <clears throat> I saw results in the first week, I saw results in the first month, and just consecutively forward from there. So it is, it is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, you're, I mean, you have, you are testimonial. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, and improves your quality of life. But what are some assessment options out there? There's quite a bit. Um, there's simple questionnaires that I do have some people fill out that will go over some of the common symptoms of what we would see if estrogen maybe was too high or too low or the thyroid hormone was too high or too low. And because there's quite a few hormones in the body, the purpose of hormones is a communication molecule to tell different parts of your body to do different things. So if we start to see the numbers being a little bit too high or a little bit too low, um, it can affect just about any function in the body whatsoever. So the, the first step is, well, let's talk about it. Let's see if this matches up with the common patterns that we would usually see if somebody was high or low in whatever that hormone might be. Um, the, the whole assessment is a, a gathering of information trying to make a pattern. Uh, we certainly have blood tests and I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of using blood tests for some hormones and for some assessment options. If somebody's testosterone is you know, borderline high, borderline low, or if we want to dive in a little bit deeper and get a sense as to how much of something called sex hormone binding globulin the body has, how much of that is being swallowed by it and essentially held in a relatively inactive state, we can assess all of those by blood. But we have other options as well. We can go into salivary testing and urinary testing. If you want to test the bioavailable and use hormone, or if you want to test the hormone breakdown byproducts or all of the above. So there's actually quite a few more options than most people think. And depending on what we're seeing, we can use all of those hormone test options to confirm a diagnosis or to add some clarity to something else that just really isn't making sense based on the symptoms alone. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's good. The, the one that we used with myself um, not too long ago was the dried urine. And I, I found that was really good. It, it's easy enough to do. And it um, gave us the accurate um, information that we needed. So now I can come in and see you on a, a regular basis when needed and, and get the, the, I like to call it the magic booster. I'm not sure what you put in that, but <laughs> I just absolutely feel amazing when, when, after I come see you, you know, my, my sleep is much better. My energy level is way much better. Um, you know, my, my clarity is there, like, I can't say enough about it. So just from that testing that we've done, along with our DNA testing, as well, we put that being able to put that together. And it, you, you know, you can give me your um, magic, magic. <laughs> <booster there. laughs> I like yeah, to I, call it. So. I, I appreciate the kind words. And yeah, it's, that's it. If we gather a little bit more information, we can see the different moving parts and we can try to make a plan that makes sense for you. Um, there are people that say a standard B12 shot or anything related to it um, will do absolute wonders and there's others that it won't. There's actually a select few that really don't feel as good with them and it, it essentially it, harm, it harms them or it, it brings them down to a lower level than what we want. So there are cases where they don't really fit and that's I think that's part of the issue that we have just with our you know, a, a medical system that is working really hard to help people, but we're a little bit overrun. We have a little bit less resources than we like. So taking the time to figure out individually, what do you need? What is your body requiring? What is your body really good at that we don't really need to support rather than just giving a blanket approach that works really well for a good number of people, but inevitably there'll be some people falling through the cracks. And I think that's uh, the hormone test that you brought up is a great example of that. We see estrogen, progesterone, we see cortisol levels throughout the day. So we can get an assessment of the curve or the, um, the change in the hormone levels at different times of the day, because that's an important part of assessment. Uh, we get a sense of some things like melatonin, um, some of the hormone, relative hormone precursors like DHEA. You can put that all together 
and <clears throat> get a sense as to maybe where the problem's coming from. A few different treatment approaches and really narrow down the possibility of what is really likely to make a good positive difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, your hormones can affect you to gain mm -hmm. weight, but also to lose weight, mm, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Yes, yeah, and it's, it's one of the things that I, mm -hmm. I do recommend doing basic assessments. If you're putting some energy and you're not getting the results you want, um, you can rule some of these things out. I mean, if, yeah, thyroid is a little bit off, if your blood sugars are a little bit out, the more you exercise, we can improve those things. You can absolutely make it better, but you'll also have this other barrier <laughs> in the way that, you know, there's a little bit of a chicken and an egg between them, but it's very much worthwhile to assess everything, have it all in front of you. Usually people know if they have a little excess weight or not, but that little bit of understanding as to what's what else is behind the scenes and what else can be adjusted. And often the answer is just simple exercise, more um, changing the diet. Um, there's, there's quite a few really effective options there for a lot of people. Just gather the info, see where you're at. Avoid sugar, right? <laughs> if you love <laughs> have a sweet tooth. <laughs> yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. I know Christine uh, has, a, has put some energy into different dietary patterns and it's, it's been actually pretty cool to see some of the mixtures that, that she's been able to come up with that, you know, can address some of the cravings, but yeah, not feed that sugar boost into any major way so people aren't left with that, you know, absolute sugar boost and the sugar crash and everything that comes with it. So if there's mm -hmm. options out there. If you see somebody who has some idea of what they're doing, and it it's really can be a beautiful thing. Yeah, I, well, I, I learned even more, like I've studied it all my life, and I learned even more when I got into more bodybuilding and doing the competitions and do, do figure is what I do, the category that I do. And um, it's, it's just taught me so much astronomically, not only about my workouts and my, my strength in my body, but huge in my um dietary i can't say enough about learning more about the dietary and that's what took me into my healthy baking is that i needed to come up with something where i could eat these healthy things without running all over town reading the backs of packages and like no i don't want that no that's going to interfere no i'll oh that you know and the biggest thing for me was sugar the sugar is not good for my body you know at at a at a and I, I i should clarify that it's processed sugars are not good for my body so when i eat things with the white sugars and white flowers and things like that i i definitely see how it impedes my my health my thinking my um you know my energy levels so much more so that's what's created where i've had to come up with something and I've just been baking it for myself and my family. And then it came a need where I had my, a lot of my clients were just, you know, oh, can, well, can you make that for me? And I'm like, well, I can give you the recipe or whatever, but <laughs> sure. So, so I just started making it for others as well. And that's what forced me into it. And, but it's, it's over the years, it's taught me so much about eating, um, eating for my body type and eating for my health you know, my energy output and what I want to do for that quality of life. Yeah, one of the things that kind of excited me about your approach when you first met was um, as a, somebody in the fitness industry, to see somebody who is focusing on the diet, nutrition and health and getting beyond just let's get more ripped and shredded and let's, you know, let's nail these competitions, but getting to a point of how do we do the, that and maintain some degree of health and longevity so we can keep doing this and let's keep our liver alive let's not be too hard on our internal organs and truly i think that people do better they feel better they look better if they're healthy so i i really appreciate that part of the approach and i always loved that you're that was in your brain that that was part of the equation it wasn't just this afterthought we'll deal with this after the competition's over mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no it's about going into it i mean the harshest part for me is when you get to your last couple of weeks before your show but it's it's a pro it works in progress so it's all year long you know coming to see you periodically to get that balance properly doing the hormone test periodically throughout your life where you only have to do the dna testing once but it tells us a lot the hormone balance is so important as well, you know, along with everything else. And I know we started with uh, testing the processor to see first, is the kidney and liver actually doing what it should be enough to be able to get these hormones? Because what I found is that if you don't 
have that hormone in your body already enough that it can take from the foods, then it doesn't matter what you do, you're still not going to get it. So at that point is when you need to find out, you know, is it enough testosterone? Or like you mentioned earlier, is it too much? You know, is it enough testosterone? Where is it at? So what can we safely put into the body without, you know, risking our health at the end of the day? So that that was really important to me because it's I do this solely for the quality of life that I'm gonna have at the end not to see how big and ripped I am and a lot of people because I do WBFF and not the IFBB shows I, I'm not sure if I can say that out loud <laughs> but I do WBFF because I like their mission they will actually mark you down if you are too big and ripped and overdone because they can tell that it's not healthy and what mm. Paul Dillette's uh, objective was was to do something that is more marketable so although I admire a lot of my friends that are in the IFBB and they are like massive, huge, and they've got this amazing amount of muscle that they've worked very hard to achieve, you know, their quality of life down the road may not be what I'm looking for. So that's why I've gone into WBFF where it's more marketable and it's more, um, I don't know what you'd say, practical, you know, to look at your health at the end of the road instead of just looking at that big you know how ripped can I be how you know amazing can I look for the moment you know because it doesn't matter how amazing you look for that moment if it's taking a toll on your health on, on the back door and you know I, I've definitely had a lot of um, young men in particular and I'm not sure why but a lot of young men in particular coming for uh a workout program, I want to get big, you know, and they're in their 20s and 30s. And I'm suggesting to them, like, look, you know, it, can I do a program? And I'm like, well, it depends on what kind of program, but let me educate you and send you to the adequate uh, parties that can actually test you to see where it's at. And then let's use your foods and your exercise first and foremost, because like I said earlier, when the body's in balance, the body can grow the body can heal itself and the body can do all those things that you want it to do. Mm -hmm. So why risk your health when all you have to do is do it, do the testing, find out what it's is, is lacking in and find out, you know, where, where it's, what it's not getting and what it needs and what it has enough of already to go. And if you're under the age of 30, why are you in that poor of a health that you actually have to put that into your body? Cause you shouldn't need it at that age. Mm. Well, you know that's just my outlook on it <laughs> I mean it's um I mean listening to your body but also too is that the topic is so important because you know what is normal you can you can you can fix it right you know it's about you know um taking charge of your body I mean controlling your 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 how you are how are you feeling because you shouldn't just settle because you know I mean that information is so so important as I said and um and this is why we're talking to get the information out you know DNA testing and you know your hormones um you know get it checked as well I mean it's it's incredible mm -hmm. yeah that awareness is a huge mm -hmm. part that what health is and what health can feel like and it's amazing how over time, if somebody has joint pains or if somebody has digestive issues or if something isn't really working right, it becomes normal. It's it's so, so common. Like if I'm talking to somebody about their digestive habits and it's very common for them to say, oh, it's all normal. Okay, we need to dive into this because many, many times when you start asking specific questions, okay, how much, how often, how do you feel, et cetera, let, let's compare this to what you know is really normal or what is the sign of health more importantly. And it's very common that what people say is normal just isn't. So I, I usually find that people have a sense of something isn't right. And I think that's worth listening to. And when you feel that, well, step one, okay, are you sleeping enough? Are you taking care of yourself? Like sometimes it's just absolute basics and they're really, really worth looking at. I mean, with all the fancy tools and equipment and assessments, we should come back to the basics of, well, how well are you sleeping? How well do you take care of yourself? What are your stress outlets? Because we all have stress. We need some way to get this out. And we don't need fancy tests to tell us those things. So the tests are awesome. I love them. It's one of the more fun parts of what I do. 
Uh, but we can just stop and take a look. Okay, what's awesome with my life? What's awesome with my patterns? And what in my daily life pattern is helping me and what isn't helping me? Like what, what can we make a little bit of a shift in to make a large amount of difference? And I, I think that's a really beneficial place to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And definitely important. You know, a, a lot of people that uh, clients that I'll have to come to see me, and it's just a matter of putting the proper foods in and taking out those processed sugars, taking out those things that are impeding their life. And then if that's not correcting, then sending them in like a lot of um, um, middle aged people that I've dealt with, I've like, look, go and see the naturopath, you know, well, I went and got my testing done from my doctor. And I'm saying, you know, your medical doctor is great. But my experience of that is when I went in to get my testing done, the doctor told me my medical doctor, and I love him. I really appreciate him because he's been amazing throughout the years. But at the same time, he's only going to tell me, well, your hormones are, are great. You know, they're, they're on cue for, especially for a woman on your age. Like, since when have I ever tried to be a woman my age? Not that I'm afraid of my age. I'm quite proud of the way I look and feel, you know, at, and the quality of what I have at this age. But at the same time, he was only able to give me those results because that's what his job is. You know, he's there to assess it. He's there to, um, you know, let me know, is there something wrong or not? If there's something wrong, then we need to get to it and we need to take care of it right away. And then from there, I've gone to the um, naturopath and, you know, like coming to see you as well, Dr. Lucas, and saying, you know, look, I need to check on my hormones and see where they're at. You know, I did my hormone balancing or my re rejuvenation program when I was down in the States, but, and they did check it. And we checked it a couple of times throughout the term that I was doing that. But at the same time, you know, that was a few years ago. So now I need to follow up with that periodically, which is about every, I find every two to three years is when I do, you know, some people might need it more, some people might need it less. It's, I think it depends on how you feel again, but just coming in and getting that testing done with you and finding out, you know, look, it's, it's, it's okay, but we could improve a little bit over here. Because at any point in time, I really like what you said earlier, you know, we, we, we don't have to be, I don't have to act like I'm, you know, ancient, because I am, you know, <laughs> I can still have quality of life. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's, it's a perfect example of that, that healthy versus normal, or what's common versus normal. And they're, they're not the same. If, if we compare everybody you know, if we throw everybody into a lab test, we say, okay, most of the people will define as normal, which is essentially how the system works. We'll define some people as higher, some people as lower. It's based on averages. It's not necessarily based on health. It's a really good piece of information. It's a really good starting place. But if our goal is to really have people be healthy, so not just let's avoid the major diseases and the big buzzwords and the diagnoses. If we really want you to feel your best, we have to do better. We can't just get you into this average normal place because it's not necessarily a healthy place. It's, it's just because it's what a lot of people have. And I think that's, um, that's one of the places where as a naturopathic physician, I have some unique tools. I can dive a little bit deeper. And medical services plan or MSP coverage isn't a factor in what I order. So a medical doctor has a little bit more restriction on what they can offer than I do. I can go through and actually order and tests that I deem necessary because it's either paid for by the patient or out of the patient's insurance. It's a very different world and we have access to quite a wider range of options that frankly, I think medical doctors would order more, but the, they're trying to conserve the larger pool of tax dollars, which is probably the right thing to do. We certainly don't wanna run out and there's a lot of tests that can very, very easily be run in a way that isn't appropriate and it certainly isn't the best use of resources. But on a more personal side, if something is wrong with you, if you're not being served by the average approach and the average system, you might have an, a non-average problem or something that is a little bit more unusual or more specifically more unique to you as a human being. So the example I love to bring up is when I eat celery, my tongue goes numb. You don't find a bunch of studies that say we shouldn't eat celery because tongues go numb. 
But that's something that's unique to me that I need to listen to because it affects me, it affects my health. Now that I'm aware of that, I can become a healthier human being. I can live a better life. It's, it's one of the examples of things that we can, we can change to help make ourselves healthier. And where we gather info, I think, is a huge benefit to that. We can clarify what needs to happen for our bodies. And it can improve your performance too, you know, as a yeah, runner. Love it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love working with athletes for that. Athletes track and they can feel and their numbers might change. So if you pay attention to how you feel, you're much more likely to just follow health because you see improvements. You might make a small change, not think much of it, and your numbers really improve or your sleep numbers really improve. I love sleep tracking for that reason. If you're having any problems with sleep or with recovery or with energy, Simple sleep tracking can be something that helps a lot of people because you can see differences. You can see that a couple of drinks before bed change those numbers. And I've seen it. I've dealt with patients who have it. I've had it personally. You can see these numbers and it's, it puts it in your face. So I think those are the places where that testing, tracking, and just awareness are super valuable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know it's improved mine. So I'm able to lift heavier. I'm able to... Um, have more energy to get my cardio in um even it's not my favorite at this time but <laughs> you know making sure that i get that in and having the energy to do it is everything because if i can't get out and do it and i'm like oh my god i'm i know there's something out of out of balance or there's something that's lagging that i need to you know pick it up or something like that i think one of the biggest things that i noticed was the the b12 issue and having my dna tested and finding out that my body accepts this type of b12 better than that type of b12 mm. that i think that was huge for us and you know that's what allows you to put that uh, magic booster in there <laughs> you know in the proper forms in the proper um uh uh products that I need in there so that it brings it up and you know I I'm not even sure that you do have to put hormones in there it's just basically the vitamins minerals and nutrients because my body has been brought into balance with that and I'm able to keep that semi-balance you know when we say balance a lot of people are looking for perfection you're not ever going to get perfection you want to work in that balance range you know that works in here not here, yeah. up there, not, not those extremes, right? And that's what we're after is that balance. Yeah, some days I'm gonna feel tired. I only got four or five hours sleep, that's why. So the following day I get some more sleep and yeah, then I will feel much better, right? Um, if I've had some sweets, I've been out for a, a, a big dinner and I've had pasta and bread and sugar stuff. And, you know, I'm going to feel like crap the next day. I'm not going to feel great, you know, and I know that. But at the same time, as soon as I take those out and it's only once in a while, then, you know, my body's back in balance again. And then it can do what it's supposed to do so that I can get ready. But all, all year long, I don't run around ripped and toned and tight and ready for stage that's not even practical you know this is about quality of life this is about having that optimum life so that I can be the best version of me at the end of the day wonderful <laughs> yeah is there anything else you'd like to add it's hormones and and the discussion around it are it's huge. Like it's depending on what sort of avenue of it we go down, we could probably <laughs> talk all day and it's, it's, it's kind of fun. So part of me would love to do that, but I, I think we'd probably bore everyone <laughs> that isn't necessarily as, as nerdy on this stuff as we are, but I am, um, uh -huh. I'm really a big fan of paying attention, seeing what works and seeing what doesn't because what any therapy I offer somebody or recommend or anything that people try for themselves, it may work, it may not, and there's nothing that will absolutely guarantee that it will work for you. So if we gather information through studies, for example, we're finding what works for the greatest number of people, but we're not necessarily finding what works best for your body. And there will always be side effects or negative effects or people who really just don't do well with that treatment plan. So mm -hmm. I don't just want to say everything's complicated, we shouldn't really pay attention, but essentially the opposite. If we track, if we pay attention to the differences and how we feel when we try it, like 
I very, very commonly recommend to people just eat more fiber. That'll probably fix a number of your problems. That'll probably help to pull a little bit of the hormones out and be a, you know, a piece of that puzzle. Help your digestive system. Uh, for some people, it makes amazing differences to their skin. They can do quite a bit. And sometimes it's that simple, uh, but others, they'll try it. They won't feel well. So try it, you know, try something in a gentle, controlled way. If you have concerns, don't be afraid to talk to your doctor, to somebody who, you know, is qualified to answer those questions. But I, I think most of us can try the basic health parameters and track and ideally have something like a sleep, you know, a heart rate variability monitor or something that will give you a better sense. You can quantify, is this helping me? And it, it really can. It can be a shockingly big difference with a small amount of work. Mm -hmm. well, one of the things that we quite often talk about as well um, that I really wanted to touch on uh, uh, and to give some insight as well and some direction is in my industry, it's a huge thing where a lot of uh, uh, males and females <clears throat> will go on a um, you know, a, a steroid program and take too much of something and imbalance the system that didn't really need it. And what are some of the effects that are, are kind of scary that you can um, put out there so that people should really take a second look at and find out, do they really need that? And, you know, at that cost of their health. What is that doing for their health? You know, so for young males in particular, because I tend to work with a lot of them, they'll, you know, oh, I need testosterone. Can I get some testosterone? And, you know, um, I, I need that, you know, and do you really need it? Or is it something else? Because I, you mentioned before that when they take too much testosterone, you know, what are the negatives from that, that that can happen to their body when they imbalance the testosterone, the natural testosterone's in their body. Yeah, yeah, it's a really important topic. Um, I, I see a bunch of it too. And like you say, it's typically a younger men that are more interested. It's not exclusively younger men, but honestly, those are the ones mm -hmm. that are most concerning as well because they have a lot more time to feel the effects of it. So I guess really quick, um, uh, we can directly see some liver concerns. So their liver labs can become quite questionable and can show signs of actual breakdown of the liver tissue. We can see that very easily with a, you know, give or take a six or 12 or $20 blood test. It's quite simple to see. Um, it's really common for our ability to produce testosterone to go down. I've had men come in and, you know, with, um, trying to think of what I can say on, online here, but uh, their <laughs> testicular size was quite noticeably smaller. So they reported to me and, and, you know, in some cases there wasn't really a concern there. So we've literally taken a bunch of hormone, put it into our body and our natural ability to produce that hormone that comes from the testes didn't need to be there. So it's like that muscle that we would normally work out to produce the hormone is completely not used and it shrinks. And we very often can't get that size back. We also, from that, we have chronic low levels, which means we've now moved from getting maybe a benefit from this hormone to now being dependent on it to get what would otherwise be considered normal and healthy. So we're now forever going to have injections or whatever sort of application we have, the costs associated with that, plus our body can't turn it up and down. So our risks of weird diseases start coming up, our risk of having weird uh, hormone imbalances. So commonly we'll talk about how testosterone converts into estrogen. So men will get the uh, breast tissue formation, they'll get really sensitive nipples. Um, that's a very real thing. You do see that. Um, uh, there's medications people take to try to fight it off. But once it starts, uh, it's effectively you need a surgery now if you want to remove that excess tissue. Um, so it's wow. it's very much a important long-term gain. And most people are taking the information to just apply it to the short term. They're getting you know the, the information off of the street, so to speak, from other people who've done it. And a lot of times other people who've done it haven't really lived the negative effects themselves or they don't really value that long-term health. So I, yeah, that's, that's an important point for me as well. It's very much take care of yourself and you can do some basic testing mm -hmm. to see if you're in a safe, healthy place. Um, there's maybe a different range of what is considered, you know, uh, expected, I guess, depending on what your plans are and how you're treating your body. But if you're not assessing it anyway, you're putting yourself potentially in a much greater danger than you know, and you're making yourself really need this stuff for future and at some point it might not be able to serve the purpose you need anymore you might be beyond what even that hormone could help so definitely worth doing it intelligently ideally not doing it at all but um you know to be realistic with the sports sometimes we're hard on our bodies to achieve a goal and my job is to keep people safe whatever the choices are thank you and if, oh christine go ahead <laughs> love that yeah no that's that's 
right on point. I, I really appreciate that because we've, I know we've talked about it um, extensively, you know, what can I say to these young males to really help them? And, you know, and, and I've also got females that will take this backdoor program that is just like, oh my God, do you know, we realize what you're doing to your system. And, you know, you may not be able to have children because you put your body so out of out of you know and now you're you're dealing with all these complications you can't lose weight to save your soul because you put it so out of balance and you're only 20 or 30 years old it's like it's scary to me I just look at it and think oh my god you know (laughs) that's uh yeah so that's definitely very helpful and you know to know that they can start they can you know come in and get a test from you they can you know start from there see where they're at today and then go from there you know, I always like to say, go as far as you can. When you get there, go from there. <laughs> and start today, you know. Yes. You know, don't wait. Start today. And, you know, if people want more information, where can they go? Uh, well, my personal website is drlucasmack.com. Um, that's more specific to me. Um, the clinic that I'm operating is the Delbrook Integrative Medical Center. So delbrookintegrative.com. Uh, information with the practitioners at the clinic there. And we're slowly loading up more information, more content, and trying to have a reliable uh, source of information that people can come to for some of these topics and for some other ones. Mm-hmm. And that's great. That's great. No, no, I really enjoyed our topic and um, we should do another one, you know? Yes. Yeah, yes. I just loved it. So um, mm-hmm. I think, well, we covered everything, I think. Um, yeah, if we go all day, right? Well, we, we can. I mean, especially me. You know, you know me. I'm a chatterbox, <laughs> but you know, I really like to go into. Hopefully, uh, on another occasion, we can go into the importance of uh, vitamins. You know, multivitamins. Should we take a vitamin, if any at all? Um, multivitamin or what vitamins? You know, what vitamins do our body need? Because just as much as you can take a. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, vitamins, some people take so many vitamins that they're imbalancing the system and thus the imbalancing the hormones or their DNA is actually not even processing it, you know, because they don't know what they need. You know, they're not a doctor. So that's where it's really good to go to your ND and see, you know, such as Dr. Lucas and you know see where is my body at and by doing these simple hormone testings and by doing these simple testings like i've i've sent you know uh, a few of my clients there where they can get things like their um food sensitivities um they can get uh there's so many find out if their processors are working their liver and their kidney and then go from there you know but does your body really need it or is it really seriously in lack of it and these are some of the things that we found out you know with me using me as the the guinea pig or whatever then you know we've been able to communicate uh, with dr lucas and myself to find out these things you know what do i need and what can i take out because i'm actually creating expensive urine not you know doing really anything at all so let's you know look at uh, alleviating throwing spaghetti against the wall to stick and let's go back to you know what does our body really lacking in what does it need and we can find out more about the vitamins minerals and nutrients in our body that they actually need to be um, the best that we can be yes. as well thank yeah. you this is yeah. a great topic for the future so um yes. yeah, so it's a wrap i mean i oh have anything um yeah dr mcmillan lucas i can't miss <laughs> <laughs> well thank thank you christine because you're the one that's brought us together like this and i i really am excited to be a part of this and i really appreciate you and i'm super honored to be a part with both of you yes yes and Thanks lucas so much. You- likewise oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds perfect. Like you say, another topic, another day, and that's another big one. We could spend as much time on it as we wanted and uh, mm-hmm. still never quite cover it. But um, yeah, I, I think that what we put in our bodies is a huge, huge uh, topic of discussion. It will be different person to person, but definitely some some generic recommendations or ideas um, that we could we could go over. Yeah, I'd love to, love to do this again. Yes. Thank you so much, both of you, and uh, can't wait to do another one. So, yeah.
Enjoy the rest Let of your try. day. So until next time, <laughs> <laughs> I'll look forward to it. Yes, and I'll be in touch soon. So yeah. Okay, well, Good bye for now. <laughs> yes, and we'll see. Thanks so much. Hopefully chat soon. And I'll oh, be yeah. doing my baking so I can drop some off for both of you pretty soon here <laughs> within oh, the yeah. next week or so. I want to <laughs> perfect. Here. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Yeah, they yeah. don't stand a chance at our clinic. They tend to get eaten up pretty quick. So perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good sign. <laughs> okay, well, bye for now.